it's now time to turn to our main topic of the night. Um, we are going to talk about eruptions everywhere. And we we were looking and thought, gosh, uh, there's there's eruptions going on. And the, the image on this picture is of La Palma, uh, which is in a part of the Canary Islands owned by Spain. And this uh, my friend Michael Reich took. He's a friend of mine. He's part of my Burning Man camp, actually. A uh, really good astronomer, works for Botter Planetarium, and uh, really knows his stuff. He took this one with a, a telescope about a kilometer away from the eruption itself. Here's another shot of it off in the distance, just a beautiful picture. I'm sorry, I just stole this one and didn't credit it. It was last minute ads, but that's the way it goes. Um, sometimes the art has to come first and we're nonprofit and, and educational we're teaching you here. For example, Earth has over 1500 potentially active volcanoes. So there are a lot of volcanoes that could be going off. I mean, there's literally dozens and dozens that are erupting right now this second. And you can see a pattern to this, if you notice, many of them kind of track along this rim and that's known as the ring of fire and that's caused because of plate tectonics on earth you have regions where a plate is diving under another one putting energy down there creating extra heat that magma has to go somewhere well let's take a look at the different places it can work so on the left as you can see here you have a plate that's going down under extra energy and it pops a volcano over on this side, you have a rift zone. Literally, the plates are spreading there. Materials coming up and new crust is coming up to the surface. So you have a spread there where well, you can get volcanoes in that region. Here's another subduction going under a continent, a continent that's floating up on top of a, of a plate, where another one goes down under, you can get interaction and up pops a volcano. This is like the Cascade Range, um, all the ones in California, uh, up near Mammoth, they're caused that way. But out here in the middle, notice, there's one that's not associated with these plates. It's just a hot spot, a plume coming up over and punching its way through that plate. That's like Hawaii, I have to say. That's the Hawaiian Islands, the Aleutian Islands, and others are formed that way. So you can get volcanoes made different ways. Now on the right-hand side, you can see you have a magma chamber, and this changes all the time. This is oversimplified, so geologists out there don't freak out. This is just a basic picture. <laughs> but magma out there rising up, and it, it'll take up an easy way out. And you can get all sorts of different sorts of activity from a volcano. Of course, you have the big plume of smoke and ash that comes down ashfall. You can have lava flows. Everybody's familiar with those. That's the classic. You can have what are known as lahar, they're mud flows. You can uh, essentially melt snow and ice that's at the top of these volcanoes, and huge amounts of mud can flow down. Um, one of the most dangerous are known as pyroclastic flows. Those are essentially heated, superheated material coming down like an avalanche, setting everything on fire in its path. So you can throw out giant um, bombs, as they're called. They're huge boulders that fly up out of it and land. So volcanoes. You need to be an expert to really study them. I don't recommend going close to them unless you know what you're doing. Um, scientists, we have all sorts of instruments that we put near these volcanoes and, and next to them. Uh, indicators to mark position, to track how the ground is moving. Deformation indicators that are seeing how it's tilting. Um, and just in general, things measuring uh, seismic indicators as well. You want to be measuring the earthquakes underneath. As you start to pick up more earthquakes, it says there's an eruption coming. Now, do you need to worry about one nearby? Well, sure. If you happen to be right here in Mammoth, California, uh, maybe you like to ski, maybe you're a snowboarder, um, great place to be, but also it is a dormant volcano that has rumblings underneath. There are earthquakes under there. Now, they're not building to the point where it's going to erupt any moment, but notice it's red. That means it's this is one that, that has a high probability or even very high. Um, right up the Cascades, there's a mixture of high and, and low probabilities. Down here in Southern California, there's a couple of pretty much, yeah, not much is going to happen, very low, but there are some volcanoes down here. Notice Hawaii currently erupting, that's Kilauea. Um, you have the Aleutian Islands as well with several erupting um, volcanoes, as well as the Marianas. So uh, there are active volcanoes here in the United States. I've always been fascinated with, uh, with volcanoes, and I find them really interesting uh, just geologically, creating new land, bringing it from the inside. Um, there's a certain mystery to them and a mystique. Well, 
there have been a lot of eruptions recently, but this is just what Earth does. This really isn't anything that crazy. Here's Iceland erupting. If you're in Reykjavik, in the background, there were, you know, 200 meter tall lava fountains recently, just this year, have been some really crazy scenes from Iceland. Just this week, as we were preparing this study, a couple nights ago, I heard about Kilauea erupting, which of course is on the big island of Hawaii here. And you can see, this is the tweet I saw. Well, that escalated quickly. Um, it was just a little a, a little bit of heat coming out of the, the lake and all of a sudden the entire lava lake on Kilauea, this is the main caldera, turned over and started erupting. And you can see here, um, more of that lava breaking through that cooler crust on the surface. And then finally, in this little movie here, you'll see overnight, this is an infrared view. The entire surface pretty much just boom, turns into, turns into liquid lava. And then I saw this uh, movie of a fountain down in, the, down in the caldera down there erupting. These are a couple hundred meters tall. That's like a five-story building you're looking there. Um, yeah, so this is, you're not a couple hundred on this one. This is like a five-story building, whatever the, the height of that would be. Um, that's like 50, 60 feet tall, probably. Um, now, there have been other eruptions going on as well, of course. Mount Etna has erupted over 50 times just this year. It seems to be continually erupting, pretty much. It's just going on and on and on. Um, but one that I found particularly interesting and one that resonates with astronomers is the one that's happening in La Palma right now. I put the pin there on the map where La Palma is off the coast of Africa. Maybe plan your trip there. You can go to Casablanca and then you know fly out straight over to La Palma maybe. These are the Canary Islands, by the way. You can see here a picture of them, beautiful islands off the coast of Africa. And La Palma is that one, the one that's kind of almost all the way to the, the west. There's one slightly more west, but it's the, the northwest of the two. And the astronomers pick this one because the air coming off the ocean is very smooth. There are no other masses near there from the direction the wind comes that causes the air to tumble and tumbling air distorts the images and we want very clear images. So we put telescopes there on La Palma. And in fact, here's a list of some of the telescopes there. You can see um, mostly European telescopes are up there, but um, the Galileo National Telescope is there, the Isaac Newton Telescope, a lot of famous telescopes are up on, on La Palma. Um, some pictures of them right here on the Canary Islands. Spain owes these, owns these islands, but uh, the community there in, in the Canary Islands is very pro-telescope. They love them. They're uh, relatively quiet. They don't make a lot of noise. There isn't a lot of pollution from them. You get to have research. And honestly, Spanish astronomers probably get some of the time on these telescopes because they happen to be there. So it's a it's a win-win for the people of the Canary Islands. It's an industry that just keeps paying back for them. And they want more telescopes there. And it's a pretty darn good location probably the second best location to Hawaii, in, in my opinion. Um, Chile, at least in terms of Northern Hemisphere, Chile is better for Southern Hemisphere. Um, now, why are we talking about this? Well, La, Palma, La Palma's volcano um, went on yellow alert to all those earthquakes. These are earthquakes <laughs> wow. happening. And you can see the, the you know latitude and longitude of them picked up and boom, right on the island there. And they thought, this isn't good yellow alert that's probably going to erupt sometime soon now this gentleman happened to be uh, yeah. uh, okay well not when it was <laughs> erupting this isn't no. even la palma but this is a canary island and yeah this is tenerife. Were, okay tenerife now that, that that's a volcano it. behind you i assume oh, it's yeah. not erupting you know but, but it, it has erupted in historic times the, all, the, the all the canaries are volcanic yeah absolutely so this is what it looks like you know this isn't you know people think of volcano tropical island or whatever. No, I mean, these are desolate. These are lava flows. There's not a lot of plants in a lot of these places. Um, so dry and uh, interesting. Now down near the coast, sure, plants and it becomes very fertile ground and really, yeah. really good for growing things and farming. But up on the volcano itself, you have to wait for it to get weathered and, and break down those elements that are coming out of the volcano. Now from space, the eruption, it did happen. La Palma erupted. There wasn't just a prediction it was going to happen. It did. And this is what it looked like from space. You can see it literally there's the cloud of the eruption, the ash cloud. And now these are known as gravity waves. As that plume works its way upwards, it's causing a disturbance. In fact, it's blowing these clouds back here. It's creating its own, essentially its own weather around the island and pushing pushing across the, the, 
the clouds. You can see here where they measured the sulfur dioxide coming off of the, the volcano from space. So you can see this is traveling a really long distance all the way over to Italy. Um, depending on the wind, it's going out in the ocean, wrapping around. Uh, sulfur dioxide is not good stuff. You don't want to be breathing that. Um, here's the, the volcano itself. And as you can see, there are communities nearby. This is a night shot of it early on in the eruption. But very rapidly, that uh, eruption formed a lava flow and headed down towards those communities. And as you can see here in this photograph, indeed, the lava reached home. So this is not just a spectacle to take a look at. We need to remember lives are being affected here. Now, this wasn't a fast moving flow. So the people had plenty of time to move, to get away and to get out of the path of it. But lives are changed. People's homes, their memories, um, things they cared about and, and their living. But hopefully they were able to get themselves and their, their family away. So just beautiful photographs from Michael Reich, who's again, a friend of mine, it's about a kilometer away, caught this one. And you can see the, the civilization down below and the lava flow getting closer. And here's a close up view, just, you know, just amazing stuff. And I noticed in the background here, these must be homes because yeah. the, the, the lights are too evenly spaced. That isn't lava, folks. That's a community with the lava flow cutting right through it. Um, you can see here the map of that flow, and it has indeed reached all the way to the ocean. So it's gone to the ocean and creating new land. You can see it down there. That's called a, a, a lava delta, actually, is being formed down there in the ocean. And that's the infrared view from space of that lava flow. Here it is reaching the ocean. This is just from, I think, yesterday. And there's a close-up of that lava delta. So the material's coming down, going into the ocean, making new land. Now, if enough lava goes out there, that land will stick around. This will be new, a new part of the island. If only a little goes in, it can erode and quickly disappear. But it, this, this flow has been very strong. I have a feeling new land has been created and there's new beachfront that's happening. Some more images, again, the human aspect of that. You can see the wall of lava approaching. Uh, uh. Yeah, and you think, you know, lava crashing into a swimming pool, everybody wants to see that. But then you remember that was someone's swimming pool. This wasn't just, you know, crashing into a swimming pool, but all the same, glad they caught it. And here's a, a, a video. We're just going to play it for a while and listen to just how crazy this all is. Yeah, now I don't speak Spanish, so I'm going to trust that that gentleman wasn't swearing, but I don't know, seeing that coming through my town, well, yeah, it's like the running of the balls, except it's lava. That's incredible. It's lava. It's terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah. No way to yeah. avoid it. And it's just coming at you. So, you know, you take a look at this. And this is what they've been dealing with on La Palma. So although it's a fascinating eruption, um, the telescopes are fine. They're off on a different part of the island. But this, the ash plume could reach them. It's reached heights about the same height as the telescopes that are up around 4,000, 5,000 feet. Um, so this is... You know, the, the, this is some astounding um, footage that we're getting of this eruption. 
Um, so, uh, you know, that's going to end our section tonight on, on the La Palma eruption and on volcanoes in the solar system. They are fascinating objects and uh, fascinating things that are happening. And this is just how things work. When you put together an object like the Earth or another planet, the in interior stays hot. And as the exterior shrinks and cools, it cracks and that heat wants to get out. So it finds a way.